so I am I am recording today's webinar. So if there's any parts that you miss or any parts that you might want to review again, uh, we will be sending you a link to the video, um, and you should probably have that at later today or tomorrow at the latest. Uh, today's webinar, as you're aware, is on uh, Retail Pro version 9 point of sale and XE out, um, and we'll just kind of go through some of the basic transactions that typically happen and just the different variations that might happen. Now, as you are aware, um, most of your sales are pretty straightforward. You may or may not put the customer's name on the receipt. You're going to scan the items that they're buying, and you're going to show how they pay for that. And in most cases, that's usually credit card or cash. What I want to cover with you today is some of the situations that are not your typical one. Now, if you have any questions or any comments or anything along those lines, feel free to raise your hand. I will keep an eye on when a hand gets raised and try to answer your question as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and go into receipts. I, I have already opened my drawer, so I don't need to worry about opening my drawer. And I'm going to go ahead and click on new. Now, your screen may look different than mine, but that's just due to customization. So the very first thing we see up here is customer lookup. I don't, uh, let's just say I type in Smith, press enter. It's going to bring up all of the Smiths that I have in the system. I'm going to go ahead and choose this customer and put her on my receipt. Then I will come down to the items and I will scan in the items or not. Let's see. I need to see what kind of inventory I have in here. I'm constantly dropping in somebody else's data in my system, so I'm never really quite sure what I have in there. Okay. Okay, so I put an item on the receipt. That's all they're going to buy. I'm going to tender it out. And obviously this is just a basic straightforward sale. They're gonna take their credit card out. Now I am not set up for integrated credit cards. So that is the reason why it is asking for which type of credit card I'm gonna use. I'm gonna say a Visa and then I'm gonna click okay here. Now if you're using integrated credit cards, this window right here is the first window that you would see pop up and you're going to click on OK and that's going to pop up a little window that lets you know that it's communicating with the pin pad. And once that uh, pin pad has authorized those funds, it will come back and it will show you the reference number and the authorization number and all that other good stuff right here in the comment field. When you're done, typically you would use the print and update button to give the customer their receipt. Since I do not have a receipt printer hooked up, nor am I really reading up true sales, I'm gonna go ahead and use the update only today. Okay, now I happen to have the email receipt plugin attached to my computer. So this window more than likely would not come up unless you had bought this plugin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click cancel. Now I'm ready for the next sale. Okay, now on this sale, I'm not going to I'm not going to put a customer on, but I am going to put a few items on, and I'm going to give a discount on one of these. Maybe I'm running a special buy one, get half off the second. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my discount, choose my promo as my reason. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to the tender screen. In this particular scenario, I'm going to split tender. So the customer says, is there any way that I can pay cash and credit card? Absolutely. We don't care how you pay for it as long as it gets paid for. And it does not matter which one you do first. I typically go with whatever they give me first. So if they hand me over a $20 bill, I'm going to type in 20 and then click OK. That leaves me with the remaining balance, which I will share with the customer, you know, and they pull out their credit card. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my credit card type and click OK. 
they're going to use the pin pad, get authorization, everything comes back and my amount due is zero. Ultimately, that is what we're trying to achieve with each cell is an amount due of zero. Now that I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and update only. And I'm going to cancel my email. Now, if I put a couple of items on there, go. Okay, a couple of items on there. Now I'm going to give a discount off the bottom of the receipt. Now this is what we call a global discount. So I'm going to mark this down 20% because each item is going to get 20% off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. You'll notice that it does show an $8 discount. As soon as I go to the tender screen, depending on how your preferences are set up, it's going to either ask you for a reason for the discount or it's going to take you right into the tender screen. I'm going to flip back over to that screen just real quick. You'll notice our discount is no longer on the bottom. It is now up on the line items individually and that is why that window popped up for me to choose a reason why. Now that setting is turned on in my system to spread any global discount that I give, meaning that if I give a discount down here off the bottom, when I go to tender it out, it is going to spread that discount on an evenly weighted basis between all of the items that I have on the receipt. So I go ahead and I go to the tender screen, and this customer wants to write me a check. So I'm going to take a check. Okay, I am required to put in the check number and then I would click OK. Now that cell is at an amount due of zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and update it. And again, cancel that. Okay, now maybe this time I'm gonna put a different customer on here. Okay, we'll go with Alana Jones. Okay, now Alana is returning something. So I put her name on the receipt, and I put the item on the receipt that she's returning, I'm going to highlight the item and click on the return item button. Now, this is going to try to find the original receipt that this item was sold on. If they bring back the receipt, you're going to go ahead and put that in here in the original receipt number. But be aware, this is a filter. So if their original receipt did not have their name on it, Make sure you take out all of this customer information. Otherwise, it will not find that receipt. Okay, I go ahead and I click OK or no receipt. And then I go to tender it. It shows as an over tendered. I'm going to issue her store credit. Okay, it lets me know the store credit ID number. Okay. Now it shows that we are giving her back $20.99. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and update only because my amount due is zero, so is my over tender. I'm gonna go ahead and update only and cancel my, my email receipt. Okay, now an exchange is basically the same way. specified. Now, in this case, they are returning this item, but they're buying this item instead. In fact, let's change the quantity here to two. There we go. Okay, we're going to return this item. No receipt. Now, you'll notice there is a penny difference between what we owe her and what she owes us. Okay, because the one she was returning was slightly higher than the one that she was the one that she was buying because she bought two at nine ninety nine that made it nineteen ninety eight what she was returning was nineteen ninety five so we all we owe her a big whopping penny okay even if there was no amount due though you would still want to go to the tender screen and update it that's what's going to properly 
add and or deduct your quantities in your inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and say tender. And in this case, I'm just going to give her a penny. Okay. Now we're at amount due of zero over tender to zero. Still showing me negative one here, but I'm going to go ahead and update only. Oh, let me save that, cancel, and then new. Okay. Now let's say that I needed to look up an item. Okay, I don't have a barcode on it, so I need to look it up. There are a couple of ways that you can look things up. Okay, first way is to go into Choose Edit Items on the side screen. And once you're in Choose Edit Items, you can use your quick lookups up here. You can use your filtered view in here. Whatever you normally would do to try to locate an item. Okay. Um, okay, so let's just, let's just say I want to look up anything with the word mint, okay? Well, that's, whoa, I found nothing then. Oh, I put it in the wrong field. Let me come down here, we want the M -N S. Okay, so that narrowed it down just a little bit. Now I can highlight the one that I want and then click okay. Okay. Now another way that I can look something up is right here in the lookup field. I can use the asterisk key, which is my wildcard key. I tend to use the one on the 10 key section of my keypad because I don't have to remember to use a shift key. <coughs> then I'm going to type in um, MNS with another asterisk. And it's going to pull up a list of everything that has that in there. Whether it's the first word, the middle word, it does not matter. Okay, I find the one that I want and I click OK. That item is now on the receipt. So two different ways of looking up the same item. Use the choose edit items if you want to be able to look up by any typical normal field. Use the wildcard uh, use the asterisk and a keyword if you know that that, that keyword is going to be in your description one or two. Okay, so those are two different ways that you can look up an item if there is no tag to scan. So now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and tender this out. And let's just say that this customer wants to use multiple credit cards. Now know that there is virtually no limit to the number of credit cards that you can take. Okay. I personally know that I personally know that you can take up to 18 credit cards. Okay. Um, so I am going to do a few credit cards here. So I choose credit card, enter in. Uh, we'll just go with master. Enter in the amount that they want on that credit card. Click OK. Then I'm going to do the next one. They want $100 on here. And lastly, we're going to put the remaining on a Discover. Now everything has been paid for and the computer is satisfied, so we will now update only. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. Now another unique situation that people sometimes struggle with is how to sell a gift certificate. The important thing to remember when you're selling a gift certificate is technically you're not selling anything. All you're doing is a tender exchange. They're going to hand you one form of payment. You're going to hand them an equal value form of payment back that both of those are worth the same amount in your store. So a $100, $100 gift card will buy the same amount of merchandise that $100 on a credit card will buy. 
Okay, so you're not really selling anything. Um, the it gets counted towards your sales when that gift card gets redeemed. That's when it gets counted in your sales numbers. Okay, so what you're going to do for selling, quote unquote, selling a gift card, is to go tender. You're going to choose the way that they're giving you the the money. So I'm going to say it's on a credit card, and they they want a $200 gift card. Down here at the bottom, it's really important that you catch this before you close it. You're going to give their change back in the form of a gift card. And then click OK. Oh, I need to go change a quick setting in my system. So let me cancel this real quick. So if your settings are not set like this, it is important in order to sell a gift card, you need to have the system set up to allow cash back. Now that does not mean that the customer will be prompted on the pin pad when using a debit card or a credit card, they will not be prompted to see if they want cash back. It is, we're only turning on those settings so you can give their change back in the form of a gift card. So we're gonna go back into receipts. Back into a new one. Okay, I'm going to come down here and we're going to go directly to the tender screen. I'm going to click on credit card and put in the credit card amount that they want. Down here, I'm going to choose gift card and click OK. Now it's letting me know this is an amount we're giving to the customer. It's, if it's a new card, you're going to click on Purchase New. If it's an existing card that they just want to add money to, you would use Add Value. I'm going to use Purchase New. Okay, go ahead and click OK there. And now it very clearly shows you this is how much they gave you, this is how much you gave them. They, you did not make any profit off of them, and they did not walk out with any merchandise from you. It is a complete wash. Okay? Nobody is any the better for this transaction other than the customer now has a gift card they can give away. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and update this transaction and cancel my email. Okay? Um, So let's just say for argument's sake, I'm going to put a couple of items on there. Okay. okay, so I have a few items on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and tender it out. Now she wants to use, this customer wants to use her store credit. So you'll notice, as soon as I click on store credit, it tells me I have to have a valid customer name on there because my system preferences require that any time I'm dealing with store credit, I have to have a name up here. So I'm going to go ahead and put Alana Jones on there. Okay. I'm going to go back to this, the previous screen, and I see Alana Jones is on there. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to the tender, and it's going to let me know that she does have a balance of $20.99. Do I want to use the balance now? Sure, why not? So let's go ahead and say it, yes. Now it lets you know how much it's going to take out and how much they have available. When I'm done with this transaction, it will show that this customer has a penny discount or a penny remaining. Now, there's probably nothing in your store that they can buy for a penny, so a lot of times people will give them back their, their change. Okay, so go ahead and click OK. Now, it was enough to cover their entire purchase, but they do still have a penny owing. So I'm gonna come into store credit, and I'm gonna type in 
twenty ninety nine because that's what they have. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll leave well enough alone. Okay. Now. Um, okay. So we're good here. Let me go ahead and update only. Okay, um, let's see. So let's just say for argument's sake, we're gonna put a customer on here. I'm just gonna stick with the same person. Now she puts all the items that she wants on there. Okay, there we go. I have both items on there. I'm gonna change the quantity on one of them. Let's give a discount on the other one. Okay, it's a promo. And now we're gonna go ahead and tender it out. Okay, now he they have a store credit of a penny. Yes, let's get it out of there. Not gonna make that big of a difference, but it does let us know that she doesn't have enough to cover the whole total. So I let it know, okay, I wanna take what she has, okay? Now, instead of 5036, she now owes me 5035. So they're gonna write a credit card for that particular purchase. They're gonna run it and I'm gonna click okay. Okay, and then update only. Okay, so now let's say I put an item on here. Okay, and I've scanned that item in by mistake. Well, I can highlight this item and void the item. So what it does is void changes the quantity to zero and that in turn makes the extended retail price zero but it is not something that we typically print on the customer's receipt, only because it confuses them, okay? But know that in your system, you would still see the, the actual items that were on the receipt, okay? So um, let's go ahead and remove that item, and we're gonna put an item back on there. Okay. Okay, so let's say that this customer wants us to ship this to their friend out of state. So there's a few things that we're gonna do. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the tax area to out of the country. Okay, we're also going to come over here and find out where we're gonna ship it to. Okay, you don't mean to bring up the keyboard, my mouse slips, so I am going to use this person. Okay, and I'm gonna say no. Okay, now that I have the customer, I'm also going to charge them a shipping charge because I don't get the shipping for free. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tender it out. 
and we're just going to say they're paying cash. Okay, click OK, and now I update. Okay, perfect. So let's say that you put an item on there, a few items maybe, and the customer changes their mind. Or maybe you accidentally scanned an item that was not part of their purchase. You, depending on your security settings, you can either remove the item in its entirety, or you can void the item and leave at least a record on the screen of what used to be there. I'm going to go ahead and do the remove item. Okay. So now we just have that one item on there. I'm going to go ahead and tender it out. And we're just going to say, we're going to use some of their gift card. Okay, so we're going to take $20.99 of it and redeem that. Okay, click OK. Okay, that's showing paid for. Now we're going to go ahead and update only. Okay, so let's come down here. Again, I'm going to use my aster key. Okay, I want this men's crux. Okay, now that that item is on the receipt, let's go ahead and tender it out. Now the customer says, oh, can I buy a $50 gift certificate? Sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to gift card, and we're going to put in a given amount or a purchase amount of eighty eight of fifty dollars. They want a fifty dollar gift card, and they're purchasing new. Now it will ask you to swipe the card. You'll swipe the card to get the expiration number and date, and then you'll click OK. Okay. Okay, click OK. Now that's been added, that $50 has been added to our merchandise total. $89.24 is our merchandise total, but with the gift card, that brings it up to $139.24. So you find out how they'd like to pay for that. They're going to put that on their credit card, and we'll just put it on the master. Okay, now at this point, and at any point, up until the time that you use the update only or the print update, anything about this receipt can be changed. So you'll notice down here, there is a show tender details option. This allows you to go in and delete any, tra any tender transaction that you want. So I now close this, and now all I see is the $50 gift card because they still owe me the, the full balance. They decide they're going to use a credit card instead. So you come over here to credit card, choose your card type, click OK. Now this customer says, oh, you know what? Can, is it too late to add these items? It's not too late as far as the computer's concerned. Whether or not you want to admit that it's not too late is entirely up to you. But know that you can click on this items button or even down here on, on Dana. You can click on this items button right here or you can click on this receipt details button down here. That will take you back to the screen. You'll notice it puts you right there on the item number.
Okay. Now, if that's if that's what you want to do, you can now add in more items. Okay. Well, Okay, now go back to the Tinder screen and it will show you after adding in that new item, they have a new balance due of $31.48. You ask how they'd like to play, pay for it, they tell you, I'm going to pay cash. Now, typically, they would issue you, they would give you $35 if the bill was $41 and change. Because not a lot of people want to walk around with a bunch of change. So go ahead and click OK. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and update only, cancel my receipt. Okay then, um, anything else specifically that you might want to see? I'll go ahead and unmute you, Tammy, just so it makes it easier for you to ask me any question or any scenario that you guys have come across that you need help with. Because I can't think of anything else that I haven't covered. Okay. Okay. So at this point, let, let's, I know what I can go over with you. At this point, that person that was just here asked you for a gift receipt. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to cancel the new receipt and start it because you haven't started one yet. And you're going to go here to the list view. Okay, let me just get this out of the way. Okay. Okay, let me just move this out of the way again. Okay, over here. Here we go. Okay, so this customer wants a gift receipt on the last sale that we ring up, which is this one right here. I can go into form view, and then when I click on gift receipt, right over here on the side, it is going to bring up a correlating match. So I'm just gonna say it was this one right there. Okay. Okay, so we need this item right here. And then we're going to go one item for the receipt. And then I would choose my re my gift receipt design. I don't think we have one in here for gift receipt. I guess it doesn't really matter which one I pick. I'm just going to go with this one. Because the whole idea of a gift receipt is to give them all of the information they need about the items without them knowing about the price or how it was paid. So as you can see, this default receipt is really plain, really basic and straightforward, just has their main address information with who helps them out and the SKU that was used. And then it shows the description. So we're going to go ahead and close this. Okay. Now in the form view, We also have um, different disbursements. If those have been set up in your system, then you can do your disbursements here as well, like a cash drop or a paid out or paid in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and back out to the main screen. And we're going to go into the XC out. Now, the X out you can run anytime you want throughout the day, all day long if you want. And it is going to let us see where our sales are at for the day without making us count our drawer. 
Now, typically, you do not need all of this information in here. Okay, so that's me. Okay, now that I have this in here, I'm going to click on Save. Okay, so once you have all of this set up, the way that you want it. I'm just going to make sure my workstation is set. I'm going to take the cashier name out, and I'm not dealing with any drawers, so I'm going to take that out. Once this is set up, save it so you don't have to do it again. But now I'm going to come over here and click on Run. Now I'm going to choose the XE out 38, but you should already have a design specifically designed for you. And this is just a default. So this is showing me on the X out how much I did in sales, what I did in returns, and the net of those. It's going to show me how much tax I took in, how much tax I had to give out, and the net of those. Then it shows me my shipping and the net. Any fees or deposits used would show up in these two lines right here. Now, the subtotal is here and then we get down into the net section and the reason I call it that is because you'll notice every field here basically is net something it's some sort of tender type so this is showing me for the gift cards as of right now I have more out there in gift cards than have been redeemed today in gift cards that's why it's showing a negative okay now You'll notice at the bottom, it shows the subtotal, plus, in this case, plus the net gift card, because it's a negative, gives me my cash flow total. Then beyond there, you're going to see, a, you're going to see all your different discounts. You're going to see how many sales you ring up. I have Canadian dollars set up in my system, so it's showing me what I took in in Canadian. Then it's going to show me what I did in checks. And then most importantly, all your cards. This all cards total is what you want to compare to the to your pin pad or your Zon unit at the end of the night. Now, especially if you're using a Zon unit, this is critical. If you were using integrated credit cards, it's not as critical because it's very rare that you have a sale on an X out that you don't have in Retail Pro. Okay. Then it show, starts showing you the different types of gift, uh, credit cards. I'm going to go to the next page. And I'm going to scroll on up to the top. So that's how much I did in Visa. This is how much I did in American Express. Diners, MasterCard. So you'll notice if I don't take the credit card, it won't show up. Okay. Then you're going to see this total of undefined. Um, that is coming back undefined due to some of my settings that I'll have to fix. And then we see the total of the store credit. Okay. Now I'm going to go over, I'm going to close out of this, and I'm going to uh, show you the Z out. So with the Z out, I'm going to come over here to the register, open, close. And you'll see that I open this. Uh, it shows open on today. Uh, and it shows early. It shows early, early in the morning. Okay. If you see something like that, it must mean that it's scheduled to run without you there. Okay. Now, as long as you have an opening amount there, and you're going to put a closed amount here. So maybe I put in 200, and then I click next. And this is where you're going to count how many different bills you have. So maybe I have $200, $250 bills, I have 720s, we'll say 410s, 105s, 23 quarters, And make sure that you are okay. Okay. 
Okay, come back over here. One, two, five, three. Okay, now I'm going to click next, and it's going to make me match all my non-currency depending on my settings. I have not turned those on yet, um, but normally I would see a list of all my credit card sales right in here, and then over on the side, it will group them together by last name. So you take any given last name, so you have four or five in there, you're just going to um, you're just going to verify that all the credit cards that you see listed here are, in fact, in the system. You have a, a signed slip for it. Now, if you're integrating with Cayenne, you don't actually need a signed credit card slip anymore. You just need the signature on the pin pad. Now, if I was taking personal checks, I'd need to verify that the check was in the drawer. Those are the two main things that you need to verify in the Z app. So I'm going to click Next. Let the system reconcile. I'm going to choose the same design I used on the X. Only now I am over $363.18. Because I don't show that I opened with any, I did $76.50 in cash sales. I dropped, I didn't drop any cash in the cash drawer, but if I had it, it would show here. So the computer is saying I should have $439 in the drawer, $439.68. When I counted or made up those numbers, I came up with 363.10. So I'm actually short. Okay. Now my non-currency is always should always balance. My total will balance once my cash balances. Okay. But if I'm going to go ahead and do this, I'm going to click finish. If I want to go back and recount it. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to write this down real quick. For 39.68. Okay, so I'm going to go previous, previous, and then, okay, let's figure out these. Uh, Okay. Okay, and then I'll go next. Oh, let's do sixty-eight. Let's do. Okay. I click next. Verify that this is in my system. Click next, let it reconcile. Okay, and I still don't don't balance, but now I can do that up to three or four times. Beyond that, you are going to want to go ahead and finish it. Okay, now that will retain a copy of it in your former Z out. Okay, so if I come into former Z out, there's the one that I just did, and you'll see that it looks just like that it looks just like the X out with one exception. The exception is it doesn't have all of your dollar coins coins counted in here. They are all of your, your dollar information. But beyond that, it is the same exact report. Okay, that is your Z out. Any questions about anything that I've covered today? Okay, anything that you'd like me to show you specifically? Well, if you do not have any questions, then I will let you get back to work. Um, thank you again for taking time out of your day to join the version 9 point of cell XC out webinar. Like I had mentioned, this will be sent to you with a link uh, and it will also be posted up on YouTube. 
So if you want to rewatch it or re-look at anything that we did in here today, you most certainly can. Uh, again, thank you for joining me and feel free to join us for any upcoming webinars. Thank you so much.